money and the financial system are intertwined and cannot be separated, they both influence and affect the whole economy, such as the inflation rate, business cycles, and interest rates. Consequently, consumers, investors, savers, and government officials would make better informed decisions if they understood how the financial markets and money supply influence the economy. A financial market brings buyers and sellers face to face to buy and sell bonds, stocks, and other financial instruments. Buyers of financial securities invest their savings, while sellers of financial securities borrow funds. A financial market could occupy a physical location like the New York Stock Exchange where buyers and sellers come face to face, or a market could be like Nasdaq, where computer networks connect buyers and sellers together. A financial institution links the savers and borrowers with the most common being commercial banks. For example, if you deposited $100 into your savings account, subsequently, the bank could lend this $100 to a borrower. Then the borrower pays interest to the bank. In turn, the bank would pay interest to you for using your funds. Banks' profits reflect the difference between the interest rate charged to the borrower and the interest rate the bank pays to you for your savings account. So, why would someone deposit money at a bank instead of directly buying securities through the financial markets? A bank, being a financial institution, provides three benefits to the depositor. First, a bank collects information about borrowers and lends to borrowers with a low chance of defaulting on their loans. Thus, a bank's specialty is to rate its borrowers. Second, the bank reduces your investment risk. Bank lends to a variety of borrowers, such as home mortgages, business loans, and credit cards. If one business bankrupts or several customers do not pay their credit cards, then the default does not financially harm the bank. Bank would earn interest income on its other investments that offset the bad loans. Finally, a bank deposit has liquidity. If people have an emergency and need money from their bank deposits, they can easily convert the bank deposit into cash quickly. Economists use liquidity to define money. Liquidity is people can easily convert an asset into cash with little transaction costs. For example, if you take all your assets and list them in terms of liquidity, then liquidity forms a scale as shown in this figure. Cash is the most liquid asset because a person already has money and does not need to convert it to money. Subsequently, a savings account is almost as good as cash because customers can arrive at a bank or ATM and convert their deposits into cash quickly with little transaction costs. Nevertheless, cars and houses are the least liquid assets because owners require time and high transaction costs to convert these assets into cash. Economists define the money or the money supply as anything that people pay for goods and services or repay debts. In developing countries, people use cash as money. In countries with sophisticated financial markets like the United States and Europe, the definition of money becomes complicated because money includes liquid assets, such as cash, checking accounts, and savings accounts. People can convert these assets into cash with little transaction costs. Consequently, economists include highly liquid assets in the definitions of money. However, economists never include assets such as houses in the definition of money. Unfortunately, homeowners need time and have high transaction costs to convert a house into cash. Many homeowners will not sell their homes quickly by selling it for a lower value than the home's market value.